Welcome back to another World Hiker Travel video and today I'm going to try to answer the question that I've been asked thousands of times. Brian or Mr. Asher, if you are a student of mine, after nearly visiting every country in the world, what are your favorite countries to visit? So I've thought long and hard about what are my top 10 countries on earth to visit, several of which will surprise you. So without further ado, let's get to my top 10 list. Starting with country number 10, the Philippines. The Philippines has over 7,000 islands. It is one of the most stunningly beautiful places in the world. I went to the Philippines during my 100 country year and it was one of my absolute favorites. After visiting many challenging to get to Pacific Island nations, people in the Philippines are super friendly, the food is tasty, and the price tag is cheap. The Philippines is a country where you can rent a scooter for 10 bucks a day and go from beach to beach or waterfall to waterfall. Given that the country has over 7,000 islands, Islands, you are always close to the water and there are tons of great places to swim, kayak and snorkel. You can also swim with the biggest fish in the ocean, the whale shark, which is an absolute must do activity. I honestly felt like one of these beasts could have swallowed me whole. Their mouths are absolutely enormous. The Philippines is easily one of the coolest countries in the world. Number 9 Oman. What? Oman? Yes, Oman. If you want a super safe Middle Eastern country with absolutely spectacular landscapes, Oman is the perfect spot. It's a great introduction to one of the most misunderstood regions of the world. Oman has beautiful beaches with incredible whitewashed fishing villages to match. There are fortresses and villages carved out of the sides of mountains. There's tasty food and friendly locals. And you have to love the daily tradition of eating dates. In fact, I never knew there could be so many different types of dates until I went to Oman. As soon as you leave Oman's safe cities, you get a glimpse of how people have lived on the Arab Peninsula for centuries. If you are looking for one of the most beautiful deserts in the world, look no farther and make your way out to the Empty Quarter, the world's largest sand sea. Trying to escape some of the heat of the desert, Oman has stunning oases that are tucked away in the desert sands. I've been to Oman twice, once to the north and once to the south to be able to make my way into Yemen, one of the hardest countries to visit in the world. I knew that Oman would have beautiful mosques, but I had no idea I'd feel so safe the entire time and see animals like flamingos dotting the beautiful coastlines. I guarantee you that Oman is a gem of a country and I can't see how it will stay under the radar much longer. Number 8. Mongolia. I love wide open spaces and Mongolia is the least densely populated country on earth. The capital, Ulaanbaatar, is a fascinating city with beautiful temples. If you're lucky, you might even be able to catch traditional Mongolian throat singing and dancing. However, once you get outside the capital, you realize just how immense Mongolia is. It's more than twice as big as Texas or three times as big as France, and there are only three million people in the entire country. When you think of Mongolia, you can't help but picture Genghis Khan and his fierce Mongol warriors riding across the barren landscape of what today is known as Mongolia. <laughs> to me, Mongolia is a magical country that holds on to a traditional nomadic lifestyle which has nearly been erased in today's modern world. Gurs or yurts can still be seen across the entire country, and I got to spend a week in southern Mongolia staying with local families. This was an absolute treat for me to see how these nomadic families survive with their camels, horses, sheep, goats, and other animals which provide them enough income to survive. The landscape in Mongolia is harsh, barren, but unmistakably beautiful. And in my mind, it is one of the truly distinct nomadic cultures of the world. I can't wait to go back to explore more of this fascinating country in the future. Coming in at number seven, Brazil, the fifth biggest country in the world with so much to see. I spent nearly two and a half years living in Southern Brazil and teaching English. My name is Julia, welcome to Brazil. And I absolutely loved living there. I became fluent in Portuguese. Muito <laughs> boa. <laughs> All right, let's try a little Portuguese lesson here at a breakfast shop, corner of the empanada, serving water, sweets, and met so many incredibly warm and kind people during my time. Brazilian people are among the most friendly people in the world. <laughs> Brazil is an outdoors paradise. As the Portuguese song goes, abençoada por Deus e bonita de natureza, which means blessed by God and beautiful by nature. 
I absolutely loved how green most parts of Brazil are. There are thousands of amazing waterfalls tucked away all over the country. Several years ago, I even got to take a local boat a thousand miles down the Amazon River while sleeping in a colorful hammock each night and talking to locals and Portuguese along the entire way. Talk about an epic adventure. If I had to pick one meal to have tomorrow from anywhere in the world, it would be a Brazilian steakhouse. There's just nothing that compares to having waiters running to your table with 20 different spits of meat right off the grill. Brazil is a tropical paradise of a country, which you could explore for a lifetime, and it most definitely deserves a spot in my top 10 countries in the world. Coming in at number 6, Iceland, the land of fire and ice, is the only European nation to make my top 10. It's not even part of mainland Europe, actually. Iceland has less than a half a million people, so odds are, once you get out of Reykjavik, you'll find yourself surrounded completely by Mother Nature at full force. If you like waterfalls, it simply does not get any better than Iceland. Supposedly there are about 10,000 waterfalls in the country, many of which have names ending in Foss, which means waterfall in Icelandic. There are way too many fosses to count with names like Svartifoss, Golfoss, Skogafoss, and Brurrfoss. The high level of rain and snow and summer glacier melts make Iceland the waterfall capital of the world. I rented a car and camped out while driving around the insanely beautiful Ring Road. I felt like I was in heaven as I went in the month of June and I never saw complete darkness for the entire nine days I was in the country. It's 12.30 at night, you can still see all the light pouring in the windows. Checking out some of the thermal hot spots out here as it's snowing. While cheaper flights and more marketing is making Iceland a bit more popular of a destination these days, I found that I was still able to have plenty of room to myself. I cannot explain to you how many times I was blown away by the stunning natural beauty of this country. And make sure to say hi to a local Icelandic horse or two along the way, as they are often very friendly. Iceland is a country that I picture going back to many times in the upcoming years. Coming in at number 5 is Kenya. Upon arriving in Kenya, I had the opportunity to volunteer at Sunrise of Africa School, about an hour outside of Nairobi. Made it to Nairobi, Kenya with my Uber driver here, Urbanus. I was warmly welcomed by the vice principal of the school, who without ever having met me, let me stay at his simple apartment in town. My name is Collins Atito and uh, welcome to Sunrise. This man is made of um, corn flour. And I was really impressed at the huge smiles I received from the students and the life that bursted out of the classroom walls. The students valued their education, helped clean the classrooms, received lunch and a snack at school, and generally seemed happy. I was really impressed at the tribal dances and music that were part of the curriculum. My time at Sunrise of Africa School gave me an inside glimpse to a non-touristy working class town in Kenya. Kenya is of course famous for animals and safaris. Kenya has some great animal conservation centers where you can learn about elephants and rhinos and how they are being protected and even get up close and personal with giraffes. <laughs> Kenya's people belong to 42 different tribes. While the Kikuyu tribe is the biggest, the Maasai is perhaps the most famous. The Maasai people are absolutely stunning with their bright colored clothing and tall and slender physique. Glad to be in good hands here with our Maasai security. In case there's any elephants or lions or anything that comes in at night, we will be protected. Tradition states that Maasai men must kill a lion as a rite of passage. Maasai men also maintain the tradition of jumping as high as they can repeatedly. The higher a young man jumps, the more eligible he is to attract a bride. Spending a couple of days with the Maasai was absolutely amazing. Lion King seems to come to life in the Maasai Mara National Reserve, which neighbors the equally amazing Serengeti in Tanzania. The region seems like a corner of the world that could have only been created by God, as it is home to a stunning array of wildlife. Spending the day getting to see elephants, lions, zebras, and wildebeest is amazing. 
We even had some playful young cheetahs climb on the back of our jeeps. Part of me wanted to panic, and part of me wanted to see them face to face. This was an experience that I will never forget. The Great Plains in Kenya and Tanzania are most likely the best place to see big game in the entire world. And you feel truly alive when you spend all day surrounded by the most magnificent animals on earth. For its warm and smiling people, incredible beauty, and amazing animals, Kenya is a must in my top 10 countries in the world to visit. At number 4 I have Chile and Argentina. Why two countries? Because Patagonia, one of my favorite places in the world, is divided between southern Chile and southern Argentina, so I really need to include both countries to be fair. Patagonia has mountains and landscapes that dreams are made of. I used to work at REI, one of the biggest outdoor stores in the United States. Every day in the store I would walk by pictures of Patagonia on the wall and wish someday that I would have the chance to visit the southernmost part of the Americas. Finally, about eight years after moving on from REI, I had the chance to visit this region for several weeks, and it did not disappoint me. Torres El Paine in Chile is one of the most stunning national parks in the world. The W and O circuits are world famous for being some of the best treks on earth. Stealth camping at its finest. Camping out for free here at Torres del Paine National Park, and the entrance to one of the finest national parks in the world. El Chalten in Argentina is a hub for stunning hikes that will take you to glacier lakes that will take your breath away. Laguna de los Tres, uh, one of the cooler hikes in Patagonia for sure. Perito Moreno Glacier is one of the biggest glaciers in the world outside of the Arctic, and truly makes you feel alive and like you are at the end of the earth. One of the most memorable days of my life was camping out with 100,000 penguins on a remote beach hours away from civilization in southern Patagonia. Hearing the sounds of penguins at 3.30 a.m. as the sun starts to come up over the horizon on one of the longest days of the year is a sound that I will never forget. Walking down to the beach and getting to join thousands of penguins for their morning stroll down to the water was absolutely incredible. I had no idea that these little guys were so curious and friendly. Of course I had to record a video to use in my Spanish class, as I always try to inspire my students to learn about how beautiful and amazing our world is. Hola clase, buenos dias. Es el primer día del año. Aquí estamos en la Patagonia. Espero que ustedes estén bien. Patagonian Chile in Argentina is an amazing corner of the world that is rugged, remote, and simply a paradise for outdoor lovers, and most definitely has to be in my top 10 list. Coming in at number 3, Nepal. Nepal is the mecca for big mountains. Mount Everest and many of the world's biggest peaks can be found here. The roof of the world is the place for some of the best treks on the planet, like the Everest Base Camp Trek and the Annapurna Circuit. Kathmandu is a bustling city that serves as your home base while you gear up for heading out into the biggest mountains on earth. It's a fun city with a lot of life in it and has some amazing temples to visit. I chose to do the Annapurna Circuit, which is a 100 to 150 mile trek through some of the most beautiful terrain on earth. I had heard about trekking in Nepal for years and had high hopes for this trek and it certainly did not disappoint. Each night along the way, you pay about 10 to $15 to stay at a local family's home, which includes dinner, a bed, and breakfast, and the chance to meet other trekkers from around the world. Every day I hiked past monasteries and temples, met monks, and passed more prayer wheels than I had ever seen in my life. I was simply in my element, in the high elevation of the Himalayas, on a route I could handle on my own and soaking in the culture of the region surrounding me. I was so high on life that immediately after hiking the Annapurna circuit, I continued on to the 50 mile Annapurna base camp trek, without even thinking about taking a day off. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Waking up to a fresh layer of snow after making it all the way up to the Annapurna base camp was a tremendous sight. I would go back to Nepal simply for the mountains. I'd also go back simply for the Buddhist culture and the hospitality of the people. Uh -huh. And I share it with my students at home. That's nice. And so can... Hello, hello, <laughs> hello from uh, Manang. <laughs> 
But for me, when you combine these two, it makes Nepal just about the perfect country to visit in my eyes. And it is very deserving of a spot in my top 10 countries on earth. Coming in at number two is Mexico. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I absolutely love this country. I have lived in Mexico three different times in my life, and this country never ceases to amaze me. Many people think of Mexico as having beautiful beach resorts and as having a bad reputation for safety and narcotraficantes. In my experience of over two years in Mexico, I can assure you that the country is so much more than all you can eat and drink resorts. I have also safely traveled independently to all 32 states in Mexico. Mexico and have absolutely loved my experiences in this incredibly diverse nation. Mexico is so much more than the stereotypes. Pico de Orizaba and Iztaccíhuatl tower over 17,000 feet high and are way higher than the highest peaks in the continental U.S. In San Luis Potosí, there are stunning turquoise beautiful waterfalls that are among some of the most beautiful falls I've ever seen in my life. In Michoacán, at 10,000 feet high from December to March, you can find 150 million monarch butterflies that will flutter around you and make you feel like you are in a movie. In the southern states of Yucatán, Campeche, and Chiapas, you will be taken back into time as you walk alongside ancient Mayan ruins set among the jungle. All right, it is 3 o'clock, an hour before they close here at 4, made it to one of the most famous ruins in the world, Chichen Itza. Mexico's cities have charming plazas and are full of colors, wonderful food and smiling people. Adios chicos, que les vaya bien, que tengan buen día. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> when you mention names to me like Guanajuato, Oaxaca, and San Cristobal de las Casas, images of some of my favorite towns on earth come to mind. One of my favorite things about the country are the 132 Pueblos Magicos or magical towns that are simply a joy to visit due to their beautiful surroundings, colorful downtown areas and amazing markets. Bueno, siempre se dice aquí en México, si está lleno, está bueno y aquí está lleno de gente, ¿no? When it comes to quantity and variety of delicious food, Mexico to me is second to none. I've eaten my way across Mexico from top to bottom. Here in Mercado Hidalgo, one of the main markets in Guanajuato, trying las tortas de carne deshibrada, or kind of like pulled pork or pulled chicken. Let's see how it looks. Got a little bit of salsa here. Hopefully it's not super spicy. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, si está buena. One of my favorite things to do is to head out in the streets with about $5 in my pocket and see how many different delicious foods and snacks I can find. All right, one of my favorite snacks, and I'm looking for something sweet here in Mexico. Chorros con cajeta or dulce de leche. Mexico has managed to maintain culture and traditions which seem to get lost in many countries in today's modern world. I absolutely love catching traditional dancing or cultural celebration taking place in a small local town. When it comes down to it, the thing that makes Mexico stand out the most to me are the people. Mexicans are some of the most friendly, cheerful, kind, and hardworking people on earth. Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Todo bien? Sí, ¿cómo se llaman ustedes? Ingrid Cristel. Muy bien, ¿y tú? I have always felt extremely welcomed in the country, and that has made Mexico a place I like to think of as my second home. And finally, my number one country on earth to visit. Welcome to Pakistan! Pakistan. Traveling to Pakistan is one of the greatest adventures on our planet. While it was very rugged and not cut out for everyone, for me it is the perfect combination. Pakistan has some of the most stunning mountains in the world, a culture you can feel, smell, and see constantly, and you have almost no tourism, which makes travel here extremely authentic. Warmly welcome, warmly okay. welcome, Brian. It is truly one of the greatest travel experiences on our planet. 
Several friends had told me that the hospitality in Pakistan was absolutely legendary. And were they ever right? Rip, rip. Hello, my name is Anis and I live in the north of Pakistan and I welcome you to be, you know, to visit this area. Hello everyone, I'm Ali Tizaz Tizaz Khan from Pakistan and we are here in the Nalter and we are enjoying so much. Thank you so much. I'm Ali Dehman and I'm really enjoying Brian's company. I was invited to stay in people's homes, share meals and given rides for free more than in any other country on the planet. When I asked why people were so generous, I was met with the same explanation, that the Quran teaches kindness and generosity, and it would be an honor to have me as a guest. Yeah, it will be an honor to have you here with us. Thank you. I stayed with locals in tents high in the mountains, in tiny remote villages, and in bustling cities. So many people that want to give you gifts and that host you. So many friendly people like Noman here who refuse to let me pay for my food or my drinks. Hello, my name is Zain. I'm from Pakistan. And nice to meet you. Each experience staying with a local family gave me a greater appreciation for the kindness of a people in a country that is unfortunately viewed often in a negative light. I constantly met locals who wanted to hike with me. As a solo traveler, I loved being befriended by generous new buddies who wanted to lead me to stunning glacial lakes to show me more of the beauty that Pakistan has to offer. I'm Usman. Greetings from Kandor Lake, Swat Valley, Pakistan. To travel in Pakistan, you have to love the journey, not just the destination. I hitchhiked for hundreds of miles with generous locals who offered to take me along their way. One day, I asked for a ride to the following town and ended up spending the next 14 hours with a local couple all the way to Kunjara Pass between Pakistan and China, which is the highest border in the world. I've hitched a ride with a really nice couple here in northern Pakistan to make it up to the China border. It's our third stop for prayer along the way. Very dedicated Muslims here. I took local buses that crawled along some of the most rugged roads and by some of the most dramatic scenery this planet has to offer. All right, looking straight up at Nanga Parbat. Beautiful views behind us. We're at about 13,000 feet, making our way up to Shandur Pass. Been in the bus now for 14 hours, got about three hours left. Near the border with Afghanistan and Pakistan. I think travel's all glory. Go ahead and join me, see if you like it. <laughs> our buses broke down and the high mountain roads seem to need constant repairing. Our road trip has come to a stop here. They're trying to build up some of this road that's fallen off into the river. So you better pack a sense of humor and your patience. To me, Pakistan is simply loaded with culture. Every day, the dress of the people, the sounds in the streets. And the local food reminded me instantaneously that I was in a country extremely different from my own. And I loved it. There's no doubt that Pakistan is rugged. Why I wouldn't recommend it for a beginning traveler, for a seasoned traveler who is up for a major adventure. It just doesn't get much better than this. And that is why Pakistan lands at number one on my list. So what do you think of my top 10 countries to visit on Earth? Am I missing some? Would your list be different? Let me know in your comments down below. And like always, thanks for your support as I visit every country in the world.